Well, what's up, guys? Hope you're feeling alive right now. I'm Micah Keneally. And I'm Josiah Keneally, and we're your hosts of the Young Adults Today podcast, which is all about reaching the mm-hmm. next generation of young adults in our world today. And we love journeying together with you. So thanks for subscribing, rating, reviewing, sharing this message with others. And uh, we're kicking off 2023. So happy 2023. Can you believe it? No, it's happy new year already. I feel like it was just 2020, which already happened three years ago. So it's just wild to see all the things that God's doing. So grateful to be here in 2023. And here's what we believe for you as the listener is that God has an amazing plan for your life, that Mm -hmm. the things that he speaks over you is his banner of love. You are as um, first Peter says his chosen people, a Royal priesthood, your God's mm-hmm. special possession. And we want to focus on that. We're created in God's image to co-create with him, to do good works that actually God has mm-hmm. predestined for us to do. He's already prepared in advance for us to do good works. And to do that, we want to have a dream session with you to start 2023. Right. And we brought mm-hmm. on our friend, Roger Coles to do that with us. Welcome to the show, Roger. Hey, hey, so excited to be here. We are excited to have you. Roger is a friend of ours and Roger Coles is a Canva designer. He helps you create social media posts in minutes. Believe it or not, for a couple years of this podcast, his templates have really helped us with everything that we've done Mm -hmm. with promoting this podcast, with sharing this message. And those templates have actually helped us reach more listeners with the message of young adults today. He's a Canva creator and Canva verified experts. Um, You can find his templates on Canva and across social media. He's at my social designer and super Mm -hmm. talented. Mm -hmm. Just last month, we actually had kind of a private dream session with Roger and um, it was so inspired. What would you say about that time? Oh, I think it's just inspiring to be with other people who are creative, where I think as leaders, we always want to create those shortcuts, right? And we need other people to help bring our creativity to the next level. And Roger, you're definitely one of those people to do that, where you make it fun, easy, simple, even for the people who want to do like uh, templates for dummies or whatever you want to say. It's just super (laughs) fun to see how God can use any and all gift and skill set people have for the glory of, of him and in his name. So I think it was just a learning experience for me. I took like three pages of notes that I still yet to have to like sift through and be like, okay, where should we hone in? What do we got to focus on? What should we change? How do we do it? And how do we do it well? And um, yeah, so it's a super encouraging. So if you're listening and you're a pastor or a leader or an entrepreneur and you're in need of some social media help and guidance, start following the right people because the right people will hopefully lead you (laughs) in the right direction. (laughs) Exactly. And Roger, to kick things off, do you mind just sharing some of your journey of life and family and even leadership with us today? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, Again, thank you for having me on the podcast. I'm so excited. And I also thoroughly enjoyed our session last month, just being able to chat with you guys and hearing the vision that you have for the future. I'm so excited what God's doing in your lives. And, uh, you know, as far as my story, it's funny because like I did not go to school for design. A lot of people like don't know that, but I went to school uh, and graduated with a degree in religion. And when I graduated, I came back to my home church and started serving there. And what's funny is that when I would come back from school, like on spring breaks and stuff like that, there was always this girl that would get up and sing. And I was like, I'd, you know, elbow my brother next to me and be like, yo, that's my girl right there. Even though we hadn't really talked, you know, but I was like, that's my girl. That's my girl. And so when I came home from college uh, and started serving in the local church, I plugged in with the young adult ministry and started leading worship there. And that girl heard me sing and then asked me to do a duet. And that girl is now my wife. And, uh, so yeah, so she really was my girl. I was just prophesying she made the first before it move. even happened. <laughs> she, <laughs> she made the did. first move. She didn't even know what move she was making, but you sure did. <laughs> yeah, I was very, very excited about that, uh, that invitation to do a duet. So obviously when you're doing a duet, you got to get together, you got to practice, you know, so that started kind of our, our courtship. And uh, so now we're married and have three amazing kiddos and love and life. And so I served in that church for a number of years, and that's really where I started to learn about design, web design, 
and it was just by nature of needing registration forms like we need stuff we need to print some stuff so that like the kids know what's going on and this is before the social media networks that we have today so facebook was starting to emerge but you had to have like a college email address in order to actually even be a part of that community myspace was like really starting to blow up at that point and so my my space is where i really cut my teeth with learning any kind of css because i was like we need a youth group myspace but we don't need like the janky templates that they have how can we customize this so i learned a little bit about like how i could make it look a little bit more custom for our youth group and so it was really my youth pastor that showed me photoshop and then very quickly i mean within months you know i had kind of blown past him because i was fully immersed in that world he taught me how to do things like uh, Adobe Premiere and edit videos. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting because now the where I'm at, where my path, where my path has led me is that so many of those things that I learned early on that you just think like these are just going to be like little fun things like that's what I'm doing now, like for work. That's like that's what I use every day. And uh, and so it's really cool to see how he not only poured into my life as a spiritual mentor, but he also gave me these tools that now are helping me to provide for my family and run my business. And at the time, none of us knew that that's actually also what he was sowing into my life. But that's what happens when you're a leader and you're hanging out with people, right? And uh, so that's kind of how I got started with design. And then uh, from that, started doing some client work. People just started asking. They started to see this th the type of work that I was creating and they'd say, Hey, can you make this for me? Or, Hey, can you do a website for me? So it started with just kind of friends and family and then started to grow from there. And, uh, you know, long story short, I ended up connecting with you version through a, our mutual friend, Matt Brown. He was like, Hey, you know, they're, they put something on Twitter saying that they need help with these verse of the day images. And I had already been doing that type of work with him. He was like, you should definitely like throw your name in the hat, you know? And so I was just like, okay, yeah. So I messaged Jordan and I was like, hey man, I'm interested in this if you'd like to like team up. And he was like, yeah, send me a couple of your images. So I did. And then that began like this relationship of a few years of working together with version doing those verse of the day images. And so a, a lot of people will still tag me in these posts on Instagram. <laughs> and say like at Roger Coles, I love, I love this image. And I'm like, Ooh, that was made so long ago. Like design trends have changed and it's so ugly. Don't share that one. Find a newer one. <laughs> well, and what's funny and, and really yeah. inspiring about those images is people like Justin Bieber have shared those verse of the day images that you've mm -hmm. created and people like the queen yeah. of Christmas, Candace Cameron Bure, she's shared those images. Yeah. And so we've all seen them. A lot of us have probably yeah. shared them and it's mm -hmm. just a matter of maybe we knew you design them maybe not and what a fun uh outlet and what a fun way to present the gospel in a way that's digital yeah. that's accessible and really ties in well with the next generation that's good yeah i agree you know it was and i i really f uh, give credit to matt brown because he saw that trend early on of like how can we take scripture and present it you know kind of like visual communication of the gospel and so he was uh he always says that he's not an early adopter but in that sense he was you know he was kind of ahead of the game with with that and so i'm thankful for him as well because just that those conversations and working on those projects again are what also kind of seeded where i'm at right now so very thankful for his friendship and his investment in my life and my business Seriously, shout out to Matt Brown. Few people have opened <laughs> more doors um, for us and for others um, than yeah. Matt Brown. We we love you, Matt. Yeah, yeah, he's a great person, great yeah. individual yeah. to know, and yeah, kingdom minded, and it's amazing. And the the theme just keeps coming through my head. Um, Roger is from clip art to Canva, right? From like the clip yeah. art and word that we're doing <laughs> to Canva, and I think throughout the last three years, it's really exposed the fact that we can make something better. We can make something more beautiful, more attractive. And I know that you're definitely gifted in this skill set. And um, just for the listener who's maybe like, wow, our church is behind or our ministry is behind, or I, we need to relaunch is always a word we hear or rebrand, like even just in the relaunching and the rebranding, mm -hmm. is it really a necessity or how do we grow in our creativity when that comes to that? And I know that you have five pillars of creativity is, do you want to lean into those five pillars and just give us like a brief synopsis of like unpack those in a couple sentences of like, what do we need to know when it comes to being creative, 
when maybe we don't feel that creative. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My, my content pillars, some people call them buckets. Those are the things that really help me to create content without them. I feel like I'd be a little bit lost and my Instagram account would not be as focused as it is. And so I have three to five, really, I have about five and they are creativity. You're going to hear me talk about creativity, uh, social media, Canva, content creation. And then I do talk about productivity on there. That's kind of started to seep back in because, you know, it left for a little while. Then my audience started to kind of like mature and grow with me. And so we all kind of became more, fo more interested in that. I've always been interested in kind of like hacking yourself to be more productive, very mm -hmm. interested in neuroscience, the foods that you eat and how they power your brain and your body and all that kind of stuff. And so it's fun that my audience is now like also kind of interested in some of those things and seeing some of the tools that I use to help hack my own productivity. And um, so a lot of the content that I create, it's all going to be centered around one of those things. And then I would say kind of like an umbrella to that is always music and humor, because those are really the things that I feel like can help differentiate your content, because there's a lot of people who might talk about social media. But if you can inject your own personality and whatever strengths that you have in the way that you talk about social media, that's mm -hmm. going to be the thing that helps you to stand out and also is going to be uh, what attracts your vibe, you know? So that's one of the greatest compliments I feel like I get when people follow me and like, yo, I love your vibe. I'm like, if you love my vibe, like you're a part of this tribe because like some people <laughs> don't get your vibe, which means they're probably not going to get your content. And so, you know, as much as you can be authentically yourself, then that's going to help to attract the the right people that you're going to connect with. And I remember when I first started my business, I was like, oh man, I gotta be like professional, you know, like the website, the language has to be professional and stuff. And honestly, it wasn't until I fully embraced, like, this is who I am. Like, I'm kind of like a quirky guy. I like to do funny, silly songs. And when I started doing that kind of work or that kind of content, I started to attract the kinds of clients that were the most fun to work with. And like, I remember, I won't, I won't say the name of the company, but I, a Fortune 500 company reached out to me and they said something, uh, they, they were interested in working together and they wanted to maybe do some Canva templates as well as having me like do some brainstorming and stuff like that. And I remember being like, oh my goodness, like what if after this email, they go to my social media channels and see like all the silly songs and like the rap and like, and they're like, you know, they're fortune 500. They ain't going to fool around with some dude that's like, like writing these dumb songs on the <laughs> internet. And, but they had seen that. And actually this person, the my contact was following me and they liked all the content that they had seen. And that was part of why they wanted to talk about the creative brainstorming process for how they would approach their social media is because of the types of content that I was posting. And so again, that was one of those times that just like taught me being authentically yourself is going to open up so many more doors than if you're just trying to be like everybody else, because right. you will become white noise. You know, you have to be yourself. Mm -hmm. Roger, it's so good. Isn't that funny that sometimes we're like timid or shy mm -hmm. or afraid of like, if we really show who we really are or the type of music we like or the, the things that we post, um, if we're too cropped and edited and filtered, it actually prevents people from really getting to know us. And it's yeah. like the opposite of what you'd think naturally, like, oh, I got to be professional versus being yourself, mm -hmm. that's actually what is relatable. It's what connects with people. And um, yeah. I just, I think a great dream session question for the listener is just to look at like, what's in your grab bag? Mm -hmm. If you want to add value and serve people, whether it's a local church, a generation, a community, maybe a college, or you want to serve young adults, you want to add value to a group of people, mm -hmm. what's in your grab bag? AKA like, what has God done in your life for Roger it's creativity it's Canva it's social media content creation productivity mm -hmm. for Mike and I we're still on the adventure of discovering some of this mm -hmm. early into that journey I think it's faith mm -hmm. things like theology um, faith in Jesus life adulting mm -hmm. with young adults relationships singleness dating and then finances so those are after dreaming with roger mm -hmm. the past few weeks we've been kind yep. of unpacking those seem to be the five topics that we keep coming back to with 18 to 30 year olds or with the next generation but i want you to think about what do you have to offer because you bring something to, to the table what's in your grab bag because when you show up on purpose and you actually 
add the value that you bring to the table. I think it helps us connect so well. And Roger, my personal journey and part of Micah's too is I spent six years on staff at the local church I grew up at. And we were blessed in the sense that we had a photographer Mm -hmm. and we had a full-time videographer. I think there was a filmmaker. There was also a graphic designer and a marketing team, like a creative department. And so we wanted to do an event and (laughs) there was, (laughs) as long as you met the deadlines and and prepared in advance, you were throwing a young adult retreat. Great. There's, there's going to be videos. Mm -hmm. They're going to be great. There's going to be, um, graphics. There's going to be images that you can share that connect with people and, and you can do recaps and all this different things. There's going to be testimony videos. We can celebrate with the church on a Sunday morning. And here's what we've learned the past six months launching young adults today as a nonprofit. We can still do all of that and more. Mm -hmm. You're just looking at the graphic design team and the photography (laughs) team and the videography (laughs) team. And so like, it's part of maybe your at a smaller church and you might not have the resources or maybe you're launching your own campus ministry or a side hustle or whatever God has you visioneering with the new year. Um, Mm -hmm. I just think that part of it can be a process of, I mean, we want to equip the saints to do the work of the ministry, but somebody has to get there first. Somebody has to steer and and to to lead the charge exactly and so i'd love if you would roger to talk about canva for ministries and how you view canva adding value to what we're all doing and and whether it's Mm -hmm. graphics or videos or like what are you seeing that canva brings to the table for ministries Yeah, so many. And I love this because now I'm starting to get more into training interns that serve in churches and doing church conferences and things like that. And so I've and having a background in serving in ministry, serving as a pastor and serving in the creative department, I feel that pain. And I remember being on staff and this was after the my home church was a larger church. And then I ended up helping to plant a church with the guy who was my youth pastor. And so we're this very small church. And we would go to conferences and we'd ask them about kind of like their creative team or what they were doing uh, when it came to video graphics and things like that. And they would start talking about things and say, oh, yeah, we, we throw that over to creative. And I was like, yeah, uh, we don't have like I, I am the creative like, you know, it's me and the pastor. Like we are the creative team. We don't, we don't do this to creative. And I feel like a lot of churches are probably in that same boat where it's like, (laughs) throw it to creative, which means like throw it to my nephew or, you know, throw it to the pastor's son or something like that. And, uh, and at the time, Canva was still emerging. Like Canva has been around since, uh, it's, I think 10 years will be next year. It'll be their 10 year anniversary. So they've been around, but they've been growing a lot. And in the last couple of years, they've really started to emerge with video editor and a lot more capabilities and what you can do from a content creation standpoint. And I think they're going to be one of the industry leaders as they continue to develop because they really have visual communication. Uh, on the forefront of everything that they do and empowering the world to design is their is their big slogan like that's what they want to do and so whether you know a lot about design or a little bit about design they're they're giving you tools that you can modify templates that you can tweak within just a few minutes and I'm a part of a Canva for Church group on Facebook and I love being able to interact with the pastors and the ministry leaders that are there because they have all these different questions about specifically how they can use Canva for things like sermon graphics or sermon bumper videos or, hey, we've got an Easter egg hunt that's coming up. Does anybody have a graphic or a template? And all these ministry leaders are constantly sharing the templates that they either found in Canva or they created themselves. And so all that to say that if Canva three, if it was like five years ago, if Canva was what it is now back then, uh, throwing it over to creative would have been a lot easier for me because if, it, if there was something that came up last minute, then I know that I could go on Canva and very quickly make something. So things like announcement videos, that's one of the things that I teach in my workshop. So uh, like a couple of weeks ago when I met with these interns, they're going to be placed in these nonprofits and churches. You can literally go on Canva open up one of their video templates, search for announcements. And oftentimes they might have, they might be like a real estate announcement with, you know, lower thirds that are kind of flying in. 
and you can just drag and drop different videos. Well, now you can do that, but put on, you know, the lenses of I'm working in a, I'm serving in a church and we have our uh, annual kids event that's coming up. And so bam, just drag and drop your video. If you've got some stock video uh, that you found online, you know, go to a site like Pexels or you can just write the they're on Canva. They've got a bunch of videos that you can check out there as well. And uh, so you could very quickly, if you have stock video that you've taken around your churches, drag and drop, bam, you've got your announcement video for that event, or you've got your Sunday morning announcements, um, sermon series graphics. They've also now got audio there so that you could search through all the different audio. And one of the beautiful things that I've, I'm still surprised that a lot of churches don't know about is that if you're a nonprofit, you can get yeah. Canva Pro for free. So it's amazing. Y'all need to get on this. If, yeah. If you're a ministry leader and you're listening to this and you, and you have a nonprofit, you have your 501c3 status, uh, all you have to do is apply. I don't know if that's something that we could add in the show notes for, yes. for everybody. I sent Josiah the link. Um, that might be helpful for the listener to just very quickly apply. And my, my secret hack in being in these Canva for church groups that I found is that if you don't hear anything back, then message Canva on Facebook. And, uh, and they seem to be responsive in that way. So maybe they wouldn't like me saying that, but that seems to be the hack that's working for many churches. <laughs> that's so good. And we are grateful that you even shared that with us. So we have applied. I don't know if we've yet heard. Have we yet heard? I think we're going to message them. We're going to message Facebook <laughs> them through yeah, Facebook. Yeah. That sounds great. <laughs> but I mean, like Canva is an amazing tool that we've been Seriously. using for years. And just as like, oh, do we pay for it? Do we not pay for it? I go, listen, every single thing I like, has a little dollar sign that says, I need to pay. Yeah. So let's do it. And right. then we spoke with you and that just saves money in the budget for us and for, you know, um, to be used. So other elements of ministry that we can allot that money for. And we know, um, Roger, that you've also developed your own templates through Canva, that you have developed your own design and brand and color and, and themes and everything like that. How, um, tell us about those, but also tell us like, how do we begin as leaders to maybe develop our brand kit or what do we look for when we start something, when we feel like we know nothing about like, we're going back to the basics for some of our listeners today, right? So just like, what is a brand kit? Talk about your templates and how can we as leaders and entrepreneurs, how can we just leverage those for the good of God's ministry or for the businesses that we're leading? Yeah. So from, uh, we'll take it from the Canva perspective first. This is always the first thing I say that you should do uh, once you get in Canva is add in your brand kit. And so within the brand kit, if you're on pro, you have a few more options. If you're on free, you still have options, just not as many. So on free right now, at the time of uh, this recording, you can add in three brand colors and you can add in your logos. And if you want to add in uploaded fonts, then you need to be on the pro version. If also, if you're on the pro version, you can add unlimited brand kits, you know, so if you are working, if you're serving in a church and you're part of the creative team and you have all these different ministries that you're, you're serving, you could literally have a brand kit, you know, for each one. Obviously you want to stay cohesive as, as a church. So hopefully those colors aren't too crazy, but it does help if you're coming up with like specific events and you don't want to have to, um, and, and you just want a brand kit for even just each event. So that would be the first thing is like set up your brand kit, three to five colors. If you're going to have fonts, don't use, you know, more than two to three complementary fonts. And, you know, that could mean that you're using a serif with a sans serif. And uh, because if you go too crazy, maybe you could have like an accent font if you want, you know, that you use sparingly. And that might be like a, you know, a nice script font or something like that. that you just kind of like put off to the side. Um, but I, that's the mistake I see a lot of people make is like too many colors, too many fonts that don't go well together. Mm -hmm. And so once you've got your brand kit set up, then when you get into designing, you can just go to the styles tab and any template that you see, if you open up, let's say that you want to do um, like a devotional booklet or something like that, and it's got 10 to 15 pages, then if you have your brand kit set up, you go to the styles tab and you say, hey, I want everything that's this color to change to this color. I want everything that's this font to change the, to this font. And within just a couple clicks, everything now is cohesive to your brand. And so it's going to save you a ton of time. So that's, that's the very first thing that I recommend. And then, you know, I'm going to be working with my local church as well on this because they have, they have a logo 
and in many cases that might be where where a lot of churches are they have a logo they don't have anything else and so um like the creative guy was saying hey raj i need help because I have the logo and I pull in like the colors from the logo, but there's only like two colors there. So we're going to work together on like how you can build those out. And, uh, and Canva does have resources. So if you even just look up like Canva color palettes on Google or Canva color generator, they're going to give you a lot of different resources. They have, um, they have plenty of stuff there. And if you have a photo, even that you're just like, I love this photo, this photo has all the colors of what I would want my brand to be. You can upload that photo and it'll pull out a color palette based on that photo. So if you're kind of like, I don't really even know how to put colors together, start with a photo, go to Pinterest, find a color that you like, that you feel like is gonna be uh, a good communicate, a visual communication for your brand and for the target audience that you're trying to reach and just start with photos and then pull colors out of that. So that's one little hack. And aside from that, like, you know, that's for the DIY, but it, I would recommend if you have the budget for it, spend the money on a brand strategist that's going to walk you through all of these things. And, you know, cause I'm speaking more just from a Canva perspective, mm -hmm. but brand strategists that I've worked with, ha they're, they're thinking about not just the logo. They're thinking about, about the messaging, the brand voice, the textures, the elements that you're going to use that all work together with that brand. And so if you have the budget for that, I definitely recommend that. If you don't, you can always kind of like start small and scale up to that. Good. I think that's a great way to approach it. Um, the things that I picked up in leadership really from Craig Rochelle is he talks about Gitmo. Good enough to move on is his acronym. Like, yeah. it, like <laughs> it, it gets you started. And then his, his thing is like, start small, start somewhere and create things. And then almost reach a point where your audience or your congregation or your business, your clients demand that you go to the next level or the budget is there. So start doing what you can and mm -hmm. then grow as you can and scale as you can. And I, I love that idea, that concept. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we want to link into the show notes as well is Roger links to your templates that you've created, because these are incredible. These are useful. These are time savers. And I'm thinking of, you might want to share this episode with your creative volunteer team. Right. You might want to come up with even a, a gathering or put together a meeting after and, and kind of think through what you're doing as a team, what mm -hmm. your process is as a team. Because the reality is there's young adults in your church or in mm -hmm. your ministry who are naturally inclined or they want to learn more. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it could be a time saver for you and you can multiply your leadership that way. But Roger, can you talk for a second about a few examples of the templates you've created that even we've used? Yeah. So obviously the podcast templates that you've mentioned, I try to think through, usually I try to think through like, what are templates that an entrepreneur might need? And so a lot of them were, you know, marketing and, or if you have an event, you've got a sale coming up and I've started to now go, you know what? Churches really need help. And so like, for instance, we're in this season of Christmas and uh, Christmas Eve services and all that kind of stuff, a lot of planning going on. And so uh, I just asked our Canva for Church Facebook group and just say like, what do y'all need? Like, tell me what you need. And they were like, I need church invitations. I'd like them to be square. I need one to be landscape. And I was like on it. So I went to Canva, made a bunch of them, went back to the group and said, you know, here you go. And so, yeah, so there's like kind of the full gamut. I've also got conference videos in there. So, you know, just little 30 to second, 30 to 60 second intro videos, even for podcasts. So let's say something like this, and you want to have a video, then you can just drag and drop, you know, the guest in like whoever, you know, guest photo, whatever. And there's like a quick little uh, stinger, they call it. If that's, if that's what you're looking for in Canva in the audio section, you want to look for stinger version. And those are going to be very short audio snippets that you can just throw into a video. And so I've got a bunch of stuff like that, that will help podcasters, or even if you've got like a church conference that's coming up, there's longer versions of that that are, you know, full on uh, landscape, not just the vertical video. So yeah, kind of the, the full game, but there's literally hundreds in there and I'm always experimenting everything from like, you know, cards to infographics, flyers, posters, a lot of digital stuff as well. And, uh, you know, with the launch of Canva docs, um, I've started to do a lot more like header banners and things like that. So 
yeah, that one's going to be a game changer. I'm so excited. They've got more coming that I can't talk about just yet, but uh, Canva Docs is only going to continue to evolve. And I'm really excited to see, you know, like I, for instance, let me just give you this example, this use case, right? I'm always looking for how can my workflow all be seamless and happen in one place. And Canva is more and more increasingly becoming the place for that to happen. So this past week I was working on a VIP day and I used Canva docs to put in all of the project list items that we were going to work on. I added all of the brand kit colors into Canva so that when it came time for me to pull everything in, I was just using just a couple of clicks here and there. And then obviously all the templates are being created right there within Canva as well. And then I can create the PDF that has links to all of the templates. So the final deliverables also end up all coming from Canva. So I could see that being helpful for a church that doesn't want to have some of their stuff stored in Dropbox and Google and Microsoft Word and Keynote. If you want to have everything in one place, Canva Docs is still evolving, but I do think that it's going to allow content creation to be a lot more seamless when it comes to creating that stuff. Roger, I think you're speaking our language. Like we geek out over this stuff. <laughs> and obviously we're not professionals in this world because we're dedicating our lives in other ways, but it's still a part of our everyday life. And just even just what you just said, like the Canva Docs PDF, like one one form of a platform that we could just use everything where everything is cohesive is just super encouraging instead of trying to cross pollinate all these different things that we've been working on. And that's a form of productivity. And Roger, you've talked about one of your pillars that's kind of been entering the scene again is productivity. <laughs> and so what have you learned um, about productivity when it comes to your business, the launching of your business? And how would you encourage somebody who maybe doesn't feel the most productive right now and they need that mind shift or they need like there's one click away of like oh duh this is my aha moment this is one little thing that I need to change in my approach in my vision in my mission in my daily routine like what do you have to say about productivity at large when we talk about that yeah I was just listening to I wish I could give the the name because I know you it's always good to source uh, you know, where you get these quotes from, but I honestly don't know who it was. I just came across one of these videos as you're swiping on social media and they were talking about the, um, these really successful CEOs. And the one thing that they had in common that they would practice every single day. And it was to just write down the three most important things that they needed to get done that day. And so there's always different tips and tricks that I'm learning. So I'll just speak to the one that's helping me the most right now. And that is like, I went old school. Most of my stuff is digital. I like to have everything stored. So, you know, my master task list, I have all of that in Notion so that I, I know everything is that's happening there. And then, um, you know, I've got different silos that, um, that help me to stay organized within those tasks because I can tag everything and categorize it. But the simplest thing that I'm doing right now is taking those big tasks, thinking about the goals that I have that are long-term breaking those things down into simpler goals. And it's just like old school post-it note every single day, writing down the three things that need to get done today. And they're all, all working towards that, those long-term goals, but it helps me to kind of take a bite-sized chunk out of those bigger goals and to stay focused. When I look down, I'm going, I'm working on something that's not on my list. I said these were the three most important things to do today, and I'm not working on one of those things right now. And so that kind of helps me to refocus and remember, okay, this is, if I don't, and sometimes I put the most important thing first and say, that's the only thing I got done today, but it was the most important thing. And I'm okay with that. You know, I'm okay with those other two things not getting done. It is hard not being able to check off everything on your list, but that's why you want to prioritize the things that are on your list so that you're getting the things done that are moving you closer towards your goals and not further away from your goals. Man, good. Roger, it does speak our language because my whole life, I've never really had to say no to things. And now with two young kids, launch of a new ministry, I'm finding myself more hesitant to take on additional <laughs> commitments that are outside of the commitments we've already made. Mm -hmm. Our commitment to Christ, our marriage, our family, our daughters, our ministry that mm -hmm. we're feel like God's asked us to do. And at the same time, I've also really never had a to-do list that I couldn't just crush. I do feel creative. Mm -hmm. I do feel productive. Um, but just the undertaking of, for us, launching a new ministry 
it's just been, uh, I've met my match in a good way. I love a challenge. <laughs> yeah, I love yeah. variety. And we're there. <laughs> like we're in the thick of it. So hearing your thoughts on productivity are huge for me. Mm -hmm. And I know they will be for the yes. listener as well. And I just want to speak to this. God might be having you listen to this right now because he's placed a dream or a vision or a burden. And really you want to add value to people. You want to serve a group of people and it might be launching a business. It might be starting a ministry. It might be planting a church it might be this year. It might be someday, but I think the things that Roger's talking about of productivity mm -hmm. of a friend of ours says that success comes in templates of learning from mm -hmm. others, this idea of mastermind, this idea of the community of learning that all of us is smarter than one of us. And mm -hmm. even seriously, with the digital landscape of the world that we're living in, globalization, digital communication and technology, it doesn't appear to me that that's going away anytime soon. And so I'll just say, I still want to be a lifelong learner with things like theology, with things like pastoral ministry, with things like leadership. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, those are really accessible. I've read a lot of books on those. I have mentors in those areas, gone to a lot of com conferences. So I'm thinking of you as the listener who wants to plant a church someday. Learn from my mistake that I delegated a lot of things like, oh, I don't need to learn or know much about graphics because our church has a graphic designer. <laughs> I don't really need to pay attention to visual communication because we've got a marketing department or photography, videography, um, graphics. There's people who are experts. So I didn't learn as much as I could have in mm. that season that now I wish I would have. And so now at the top of my list of some things that for our ministry, mm -hmm. for the events that we lead to reach young adults for Christ, mm -hmm. for the resources that we try to provide for things like rallying points for leaders or young adults, um, Canva is one of the areas that I need to grow. In. YouTube and Reels and Shorts and TikTok. Uh, I need to grow in that area. Even things like video editing or mm -hmm. audio editing. I've learned for this podcast because necessity is a great teacher. And even if we just um, took a photography class at Apple, at yeah. Wall of America. And so I would just encourage the listener as you enter a new year to look at what's an area that you might need to grow in. Mm -hmm. To go where God's calling you, what skill do you need to pick up? And um, just wanted to have that encouragement for the, the young leader. And talking about young leaders, Roger, what do you wish that young leaders knew? Maybe it's about mm. um, productivity or maybe it's about content creation. Maybe it's about creativity or social media. But what's one thing that maybe God's been teaching you or that you would really want young leaders listening to know? I would say if there was something that I could go back and like tell my younger self, I would, I would have made me read the 12 week year way sooner than I did. Cause I didn't even know wow. about it until uh, the beginning of last year. So now it's been two years that I've been doing the 12 week year. So that's kind of like we, what we've alluded to. We had this conversation when we got a chance to do a dream session with you guys, but you know, I'm thinking about where do I want to be in 15 years? And then I break that down into like, okay, well, what does that look like over the next three years? And then I take all of that and that informs what I do over the next 12 weeks. So every 12 weeks I'm working towards those long-term goals. And that doesn't mean that those things won't change, you know, because especially for young leaders, it could be that the goals that you're dreaming about at the time, maybe you're not married, maybe you don't have any kids. And then those goals start to shift a little bit because now you have a family and you're thinking about, you know, 15 years from now, or you're thinking about how oh, my parents are getting older. I want to be able to spend more time with them. So that's one of the things that's on, on my 15 year list is like, I want to have an amazing relationship with my parents. What does that look like right now? You know, how that doesn't just happen. I won't just wake up one day and I already have an amazing relationship. I just don't want there to be any distance. I want to savor every minute that I have with them because I know we don't have our loved ones with us forever. So mm -hmm. if that's a priority for me in 15 years, it has to be a priority for me right now as well. So how can I work that into the priorities that I have? Same thing with my kids. My 
kids are young. They're not going to be this age forever. Eventually they're going to have their own cars and want to drive and be like, please hang out with me. I'm going to be the one saying, please hang out with me. Right. And right now my seven-year-old is like, all he wants to do is like, please play with me. He'll guilt trip you into like, oh, you don't want to play with me. Like, oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> all right, let's do it. But you have to remind yourself because I've got those long-term goals. Well, one of my goals is to have an amazing relationship with my kids when they're all adults and they have kids of their own. Well, that doesn't just happen magically. I have to sow and invest into those relationships right now. So I would say like my advice would just be that it's never too early to think about the long term and to think about where you want to be, because the, the younger that you learn some of those things and you start to dream about those goals, the better chances you have of actually achieving those dreams that you had when you're young, even if some of them might shift. So that would be my advice to my younger self is like, yo, read this book, man. It's going to change your life. <laughs> oh, I absolutely love it. And we want to just learn more about you, Rogers. So we've come to the part of the segment where we have five in five. So it's five questions in five minutes. Are you up for the five in five challenge? Let's do it. I'm Let's scared. do it. You're scared. You should be. <laughs> All right. Question number one. If you could describe yourself in three words, what would they be? Oh, fun, creative, and quirky. I think Ooh, that's are, good. That's my good. wife would probably give three different words, but those are my words. That's great. <laughs> how about, I mean, you're quick with these, but how about Roger, like the faith of the next generation? Why do you believe that young adult ministry is vital or important? Yeah. I mean, you, you read about it. Where was it? Was it in the book of judges where um, they had not passed on the knowledge of the Lord and you saw what that generation looked like? And I always think about that for my kids right now. Like I've, even when they were just babies, I have a 12 year old right now, but since they were all babies, I just prayed that God would give me a righteous lineage because we don't know what is going to happen in the future. We don't know what kind of world mm -hmm. our kids and grandkids and great grandkids are going to uh, grow up in. And having that fundamental value of following the leading of the Holy Spirit is going to be crucial. I've even felt that in this age of misinformation and not knowing who to believe and where to turn. And I've started to just go like, I believe that the Holy Spirit can lead us to truth. And so for me, that is, that's what I want. That's what I ask God lead me to truth because I don't, I don't know what's going on. There's a bunch of people lying out here all for their own agendas and reasons and whatever. And uh, you want to believe everybody's doing the right thing for the right reason. But I think it, it's important because um, that's one of my 15 year goals is I want to be, a, I mean, I'm not going to die in 15 years. That's not the plan anyways. Uh, but being able to look back and I feel like as long as I have walked in step with the spirit, I feel like it minimizes so much regret because even though things may not go the way that you planned, if you said, God lead me, that's, that's like one of my favorite verses is, um, you know, lean not on your own understanding, but in all of your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. And that's been the prayer for my life is God. I don't know what I'm going to face, but I know that I want to trust you and I, I want you to lead my path. And so I think that's, that's crucial because at the end of your life, if you've let a spirit live, live spirit led life, it's hard to have regrets. So oh, that would be my God. encouragement. Wow. Roger, that's amazing. That's a great encouragement, but also a great challenge to have that mindset and how we set our goals and decision-making and how we're leading our families and our children and the generations to come. Um, but here's the curveball: If you could ask Josiah and I any question under the sun, what would you ask us, Roger? Oh, okay. When was your first kiss? Hmm. Like with each other? <laughs> yeah. I bet no one asked you this question. No one asked me that question. <laughs> Oh my gosh, we were dating probably three, four months before I kissed him. I was like, is this guy ever going to kiss me goodnight or what? <laughs> Relationships is one of the pillars. So I have to ask this question. Yes, no, right. that's we, good. Welcome, that's good. we welcome it. I heard a message from Andy Stanley and he had just talked about becoming the one. So I took a break mm -hmm. from dating and mm -hmm. just, he, he says like, become the person that the person you're looking for is looking for. So in my singleness, yeah. I was like, wow. And he gave a yeah. one year challenge, stop dating, get healthy, focus on becoming that person. So I did shortly after that we met 
And he also said in that mm -hmm. same message, it was a sermon series called the new rules of love, sex, and dating. He said, Hey, delay the physical mm -hmm. for as long as possible. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. I, I just like put that off as long as we could, because one of the natural challenges is it's like there, we, we're attracted to each other and <laughs> we wanted to honor God and we did mm -hmm. honor God in our dating and waited yeah, for marriage. But, yeah. but I think that I just wanted to wait as long as we could, because once, once you kiss, it's, it's hard to not kiss anymore. Right. Once you hold hands, yeah. it, it's hard to take a step back. Yeah. But yep. we had boundaries in, in, to, in the beginning, but also along the journey too. Instead of just like, Oh, there, there, I like you with a pat on the head. I'm like, I'm not five, going to bed. Like, so just a hug good night or whatever. And <laughs> I mean, we dated for what, a year and a half, almost two years. Then yeah. we got married, three month yeah. engagement. Yeah. Yeah. But we still want to start our relationship with regret. And we didn't want to have to stand before the Lord someday to explain ourselves or to, you know, if, and if we wanted to lead well and lead the young adults in through ministry, speak into their life of purity and setting up boundaries. We wanted to be one of those examples, not don't do what we did. No, like we want to live right. that out and say, like, I was 30 when we got married. I'm like, if I can do it, you can do it too. Mm -hmm. And um, I just think that's encouraging for people that we come across. If we're going to speak into their life and their marriage and their dating, that we want to have lived that out. And that was a choice that I think we both made in our singleness when we were both doing that same challenge out of state, not knowing each other. And then we met each other and, you know, God just kind of unrolled a friendship and relationship out of that. So, Yeah. And, wow. and I think that the way that one of the themes of our conversation today, Roger has been like 15 year goals, dream session, even a word that we haven't said, but we've said is values. Right. Like, what are you yeah. aiming at? What are your goals? What are your dreams? What are your values? And then do the decisions these 12 weeks or today, do they align with that 15 year vision or the, right. the values that you say you have? And so for us, like, and I'm not projecting this on other people, but we also didn't say, I love you, mm -hmm. or I never said, I love you until I proposed. And I just mm -hmm. think like, I'm not yeah. saying that, Hey, a single person listening, you should do it this way. But it was just like, Hey, these were our values. So this kind of informed our decision or our direction. Right. But well, you can't take yeah. this. I, mean, I was the same way. Yeah. Were you really? The same thing. Yeah. My, my wife was like, Oh, she was dying to say it. And, uh, but the day I proposed was the first time that I told her I loved her. Sang yeah. a little song, got down on one knee, yes. told her I loved her. I love that. Like, and let's put a ring on it. Let's do this. Yeah. And people even ask us, like, they've asked me, like, Micah, how did you know that he loved you? Like, if he never said it, how did you, how did you know? And I'm just like, well, when somebody loves you, it's through their actions not of intimacy, not of the words, I love you, but of the pure heart and the pursuit and the process of Micah, like I'm going to guard my heart and I'm going to guard your heart. And I need you to do the same. I'm going to, we're going to pray over every date before we even go on a date to put the Holy spirit at the center. So nothing comes between we give the enemy an inch. He'll take a mile. We're not even going to give him an inch to do that. So, I mean, I knew that he loved and cared for me prior to him even saying that because some people are like, well, why'd you even stick around? I'm like, it's through how he pursued me and how he honored mm. me and honored God and pursued God in the process of our dating that I saw his heart, that I knew his heart. Like I didn't have to wonder if his eyes and his heart were wandering in another direction, whether it was away from God or away from me or towards somebody else. Like he never gave me a reason to question that. So even for the listener, like think about the words. I love you. We say, I love French fries. And then I, next day I tell my boyfriend, I love him or my, you know, girlfriend, I love her. They're, they're not equally, you know, they're not equal. And we throw that word love around like it's, I don't know, useless, but when yeah, I, think, I think that's why I waited so long. I, I put a lot of a weight on that word. And um, yeah. I know anyone like, you know, the listener right now, like if you've said, I love you to somebody like, it's okay. Like exactly, everybody's, journey, sure. everybody's journeys are different, you know, and, and it's okay. <laughs> for sure. But we also begin, our approach in dating was even like, we're beginning with the end in mind. If there's a red flag along the way, right. like address it and let's talk about it. Or if it's a jumbo red flag that can't be fixed, then you run the other direction and break it off. Like, and I told that from Josiah from day one, I'm like, if there's, if you have an inkling or if you ever feel like the Holy Spirit's prompting you to say, no, this is not it. This is not the time. Then have that conversation with me and we'll go from there. And we just want to leave room for God to do what he wants to do and not write our own story. So 
That's a great question. Thanks for that one, Roger. And <laughs> so this yeah. is a question for you, for Lisa, for your crew, for yeah. the Cole squad. If you guys could go on a vacation, travel somewhere you've never been before, and you got to pack one snack, where would you go? What would your snack be? Ooh. Oh my goodness. Well, I feel like our destinations would be different if I were the one in charge of the trip than uh, my wife. So we'll go with my wife because we're going to go where she wants to go. I think that she would love to do, she's obsessed with Disney. So I think she would love to do a Disney cruise or even just go to one of like the massive resorts in Disney that are like, you know, buku bucks and, <laughs> and go nuts there. Um, and as far as my snack, um, you know, I, I try to eat healthier, but Doritos do have a special place in my heart. <laughs> and uh, w when I wrote the first like love song that I wrote for Canva and put on social media, they sent me this huge care package and they literally sent me two huge boxes of snack sized Doritos. <laughs> and uh, I was like, they're speaking my love language right now. <laughs> okay. What's your favorite Dorito? Is it ranch? Is it cool ranch? Is it spicy nacho? Is it regular? Nacho? No, yeah. I think I would just go with nacho. Yeah. Nacho. I mean, I love, all, I mean, I've tried, I think all of them I've tried taco cheeseburger. Like I've tried all of them. Uh, but I think nacho is probably my favorite. Sweet chili is pretty good though. Sweet chili is like, might be close. I don't know. Same. Those are if my you top can handle two. all that sodium. Yeah. Is that first bite you're like, woo, and then it's like, okay, half the bag's gone, we're in trouble. <laughs> yeah, I don't eat as many as I used to because I literally feel like each bite is poison in my system. So I oh. keep that in mind. <laughs> like, oh, oh do I want tonight. to die right Come now? Okay. Tonight. <laughs> no, you're getting old when. All right, sorry, babe. Question number five. Yep. It's my turn. It is. It's turn. Oh, Roger, if you could leave the listener with one word of encouragement, if they feel discouraged, let down, failure, falling short on their goals, whatever direction you want to take it, how would you encourage them today? Mm, yeah. Oh man, it's such a great question. And I'm trying to think of like the things that have been, have meant the most to me in these last two years, because I came out of a time in ministry where, you know, the church was really struggling and the church ended up closing down the year before COVID hit. So it was the summer of 2019 uh, that we closed the doors to the church. And I remember going through a bit of an identity crisis because everything that had uh, led up to that point in my life was all around serving in the local church, being a pastor and feeling a little bit lost. Like, what do I do now? You know, like, I don't, I don't even know where to, where to start. I had already started doing design stuff. And so that the stuff that was like the side hustle, I was like, okay, this has to become the primary thing for me to like provide for my family. Other people were asking about, you know, me serving on uh, staff. I had friends, you know, trying to hire me to come be a part of their church, but the timing just didn't, re didn't feel right. And I realized that it was because those last couple of years were very difficult and we needed like, we needed some time to heal. And, and it was not going to be healthy for us or for whatever ministry we may be serving in for us to jump right back into that without allowing ourselves that time to heal. And, um, and I realized that when you're in a place where things are about to close down, that sometimes there can be criticism because everybody's kind of going like, well, why is it, why aren't things working here the way that they should be working? And whose fault is it? You know, you kind of want to look like there has to be someone doing something that's causing there to not be growth. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, you hear a lot of churches say, well, you know, healthy things grow and, but also like cancer is not a healthy thing and cancer can grow as well. So it doesn't always necessarily mean that there was like something wrong. Um, it could just be that that season is about to come to an end and you, and you need to be ready for that or ready to accept mm -hmm. that and try to do it in a healthy way. Try to transition out of that season into, in a, in a very healthy way, loving the people that are around you. And, uh, so when I like, that's what I'm saying. When I started my business and being a little bit nervous, it was coming out of that season of like, oh man, there was so much criticism that I was, I was kind of feeling beat down a little bit. And it took, I feel like even two years, for me to build up some of that confidence again. Mm -hmm. And that came through, honestly, my Instagram account and me just like testing things out and trying things out and then seeing like, wow, people respond 
uh, positively to the kind of content that I'm putting out there. Like people like to laugh. People like, you know, things that make them smile. <laughs> and, uh, and I think through some of that, like positive affirmation and being in a, in a place of, you know, good relationship with people who are at encouraging you and edifying you, that all became a part of my healing process. And so I guess my encouragement would be like, if you're in a season where you are feeling a little bit beat down or things are tough, there, there are a couple of different options for you. It could be that you're praying about, is this season coming to an end? And, and am I supposed to transition into a new season? Is that what God wants for me? Is this a season where I just need rest? And it could be a season where I just need to take a break and then come back to things a little bit healthier. Um, and I realized like for me, it was obviously that season ended wasn't even really my choice. It was like the church closed. That's it. We're moving on to a new season. But I was faced with like, do I jump right into another church? And so being self-aware enough to just go, where, where am I at right now? Wow. And, um, and, and what would I need in order to get back to a place of serving mm -hmm. through health? And that was one of the books I remember reading was um the emotionally healthy leader yeah i think great. that's what the book was called yeah yeah and and that really helped me because it helped me to kind of identify are there things in my life that i'm just like not healthy and emotionally that i need to be able to kind of like figure out in order to lead and serve others and so all of those things you know whether it was books or speaking with mentors or taking a break those things i feel all help to aid me in the process of healing and get me to the point where I am now where like, I love what I'm doing. I love like waking up and, and getting to work on my business and serve others. And especially now that like, it's kind of come full circle and I'm back in like church circles, helping serve them through what I've learned over the last two years of taking that step away from ministry. Mm -hmm. And now I'm helping to equip churches to use these visual communication tools to share the message of the gospel. And it's all part of God's plan, but I never would have planned it that way. You know, I love it. I love it. That's a great encouraging word to leave us on and the listener on. Yes. Like there are sunrises and sunsets in every single one of our lives. We don't know always when we can see them coming on the horizon, but God does. And he will prepare us for, for the next, even in the now when it doesn't make sense. And we just want to encourage the listener. If, if you do feel like you're in one of those seasons, know that God has you. God knows the things of your heart. He knows the things that he's placed in your hands. So steward what What's before you if there's a healing season that needs to take place step back and just receive i think it's hard when you step out of specifically a church role or you're asked to leave or something dissolves and you don't understand you don't know where to go first of all go to god surround yourself with a healthy community of people and people you can trust and process with in a good and healthy way that does not become gossip but to sit back and just receive even a Sunday service can be hard and challenging, but it can also be the most life-giving thing that That's you good. could be in right now. So if you find yourself in a difficult season, or if you know of somebody, maybe you're on like the best journey ever. And you're like, this is the best season of my life. Be mindful of the people hurting around you, that you can be one of the people that can speak, speak life into them, provide them a job, provide mm -hmm. them a friendship, provide them prayer and just point them to God. So Roger, we're so grateful for you and the conversation we had today and we just look forward to seeing more of the things that Canva has that you're working on behind the scenes and that God's working on behind the scenes, as well as all the other people that have teamed up with you guys. So incredible. Love it. Thank you for having me on. And, uh, you know, if the next season includes Canva training, I'm here for y'all. Oh, I love it. Let's, Let's do it. Let's go. Thanks so much, Roger. <laughs>